How to solve circuits the right way once and for all and the joys of circuits analysis. Lecture 6. These lectures are based on my book Fast Analytical Techniques in Electrical and Electronic Circuits published by Cambridge University Press and available online from any bookseller. In Lecture 6 I will cover several examples of the frequency response of second order circuits. The first example will be that of the common emitter amplifier, which I'm going to discuss in this video and the next one. In the second video, I will talk about approximations of the analytical answers of the frequency response which we obtain in this video. Our first example will be the determination of the frequency response of the common emitter amplifier with an emitter resistance using the high frequency model of the bipolar transistor shown here in which we include the base to emitter capacitance c pi and the collector to base capacitance c mu as you can see this is a second order system and if we're going to apply the two extra element theorem the thing to do will be to take out these two reactive elements we take out c mu and we designate its port as port mu we take out c pi and we designate its port as c pi and we work out the voltage gain v out over v in in the absence of these two capacitors which means you are determining the low frequency asymptote of the frequency response and then we reinstate each one of these two capacitors according to the extra element theorem given by this formula here. To apply this formula, we have to perform three calculations in the numerator and three calculations in the denominator. These will be shown in the following slides. When we substitute for z mu and z pi the reactances, we obtain our second order transfer function or the form of our second order transfer function shown on the second slide. So the numerator is generally a second order transfer function like this and the denominator is a second order transfer function as shown. And as I said, we're going to determine each one of these null impedances and ordinary impedances looking into port mu and port pi. With the two capacitors taken out, we worked out the voltage gain of the circuit by the application of the extra element theorem to the dependent generator beta IB that was back in video 14 or 13. And we showed there that the voltage gain was given by this expression here in which we have treated the beta generator as the extra element theorem and it was reinstated with this correction factor here. And we said if beta is very large then we can perform two approximations successively as shown. In the numerator, this term can be ignored with respect to unity because the RCE of the bipolar transistor is typically much, much larger than RE. And when you divide that further with beta, then this term becomes totally negligible. We can perform a similar approximation in the denominator. And to a first approximation, uh, we can get this expression here. If we further assume that beta is really, really large, then we can uh, approximate this expression further by ignoring this term with respect to unity and obtain the ideal gain RC over RE for this circuit here. We are going to use these two different approximations and see how well they hold up in our second video for an example, for a numerical example. We are now going to determine the null resistance looking into port mu while port pi is in its reference state, which is an open circuit. 
We've done this calculation before in video 14 when we had a single capacitor connected between collector and base, and I'm reviewing it here for uh, further reinforcement of a null calculation example. So we connect the test current source IT between collector and base or across port mu and determine the voltage VT across it while IT and VIN together, where VIN is the excitation of your transfer function, these two together will null the response of your transfer function V0. So when you null V0, the current through it will go through zero. And at this junction here, you recognize that the current IT flowing into this junction here is beta IB plus whatever current is flowing through RCE because there is no current here. That's the first thing you recognize. So you say that beta IB plus the current through RCE is equal to IT. That's our first expression here. But what is the current through RCE? That current is the voltage across RCE divided by RCE. However, what is the voltage across RCE under these null conditions? Well, when the output voltage is V0, V0 is null, this point here is at ground potential, and this point here is at the same potential as here. So the voltage across RCE under these null conditions is the same as the voltage across RE. Then the question is, what is the voltage across RE under these null conditions? Well, if you look at the circle here, the current entering it is IT. There's zero current coming in here, so the current coming out of it here must be IT. So the current through RE is IT plus IB. And therefore, the voltage across RE is IT plus IB times RE. And when that is divided with RCE, you get the current through RCE. And that's this expression here, which tells you that at this junction here, the current IT is equal to beta IB plus the current through RCE, which is minus IT plus IB times RE divided by RCE. So that's your first equation, which gives IB over IT. The second one is the fact that you've nulled the output voltage V0. So this point here is at ground potential, and this point here is at the same potential as here. So the voltage between this point and this point here, which is the sum of the voltages across R pi and R p, is equal to minus VT. And when you write that down, you get this expression here. And you can solve from it VT over IT as IB over IT into R pi, R pi plus RE plus RE. And when you substitute IB over IT in here, you get the following expression for script RMU. You have solved for it from these two equations under null conditions. But the expression as such is in meaningless form because the numerator involves product of resistances which, in, which have no physical interpretation. So you divide up and down with beta RCE, which when you do and you use these two definitions for RE and alpha of the transistor, you get this expression here. And then we say if beta is large, then this expression here will reduce to approximately minus RE. Again, you see this is much larger than 1. And in the numerator as well, the ratio of RCE to RE is very large. So RE to RCE is very tiny, and that can be ignored. And RE, with respect to emitter resistor, is also small and alpha is nearly 1, you can approximate this as minus Re. We'll find out how good these approximations are again when in our second video we'll do a numerical example and we can compare these two expressions, the exact and the approximate, to see if this approximation is justified. Next, we determine the null resistance looking into port pi with port mu in its reference state, which is an open circuit. And this is shown in this diagram here. 
Once again, we connect the test current source IT and determine the voltage VT across it, while IT and VIN together will null V0. When V0 is nulled, the output current is nulled. And beta IB will flow entirely through RC and circulate through it. Since there is no current here, because that current is the same as this current, beta IB will circulate entirely through RC and uh, it will create a voltage drop across it, which will be beta IB times RCE. That voltage drop will be the same as the voltage drop across RE, which is going to be IB minus IT times RE, because this current here is the current through R pi, I, which is IB, less the current IT. And that current flows through RE and creates a voltage drop IB minus IT times RE, which is going to be the same as the voltage drop across RCE, which we know independently is beta IB times RCE. So we equate these two voltages and we obtain this expression here, beta IB times RCE equals IB minus IT times RE, from which we obtain IB over IT. And since VT itself is IB times R pi, then we can solve these two together and obtain VT over IT, the null impedance looking into port pi, while port mu is an open circuit. And that's given by this expression, which we can approximate for large beta and large ratio of RCE to RE as minus R pi over beta divided by RCE divided by RE. But R pi divided by beta, we're gonna, that's going to be GM. So we have our second null calculation R pi, and we have to perform one more additional calculation, which is shown on the next slide. We are going to calculate the null impedance looking into port pi, while port mu is in its opposite state of its reference state. Its reference state was an open circuit, and now we're going to short it. And this calculation is for the second order term as a square term. So when we short R mu, again, while IT and V in are nulling the response V naught, we see that V pi appears directly across GM V pi, so that the current that's flowing here is nothing more than gm vt because v pi and vt become coincident and the current that's flowing through rce is vt divided by rce and the current that's flowing through r pi is vt divided by r pi so this current plus this current, plus this current, plus the current entering from the emitter resistor should equal to IT, which is what we write down here. IT is VT over R pi, that's this current here, plus VT over RCE, which is this current here, plus this current, which is GMVT, plus this current coming in, from the emitter. However, what is the voltage across RE? When you null the response V0, you realize this point here, which is the same as that point there through the short circuit, that point there all the way down is at ground potential. And this point is the same as that point. So you see that VT appears across RE with this polarity, and it generates a current through it, Vt divided by RE. 
When we add the three together, we get IT over VT, which gives us the null impedance looking into port pi with port mu in its opposite state of its reference state. Now, we recognize that r pi in parallel with 1 over gm can be written like this, which is r pi over 1 plus beta equal to re. So this expression simplifies further to re in parallel with rce in parallel with the resistor, emitter resistor re. Now, before moving on to the port resistances of the denominator, I would like to see if r mu pi is a simpler expression than r pi mu, which we just calculated. Because if it is, then I would rather use the product r pi r mu pi instead of r mu r pi mu for the second order term in the 2EET. So I'm going to find this out and using the circuit diagram here, where I look into port mu with port pi shorted, which when I short will set B pi equal to zero, and this dependent current source will drop out of the picture. And when that happens, we see that VT appears directly across RCE, and the test current IT will entirely flow through RCE because there will be no current in this branch. This is a null impedance calculation where IT and V in have null the response V naught, so there is no current here. So there you have it. R mu pi turns out to be nothing more than RCE, and indeed it is a simpler expression than R pi mu. So I'm going to use this second form here instead of this one that I had originally written down for my second order term in the 2EET. And now we will determine the port impedances for the denominator, whereby we set the excitation equal to zero, which in this case is the input voltage V in, as shown here. The first one we're going to calculate is R mu, and we did this before in video 14, when we had a single capacitor connected between the collector and base junction. I'm repeating that calculation here to demonstrate again or to reinforce the idea that you can nest the extra element theorem within the two extra element theorem or three or four extra element theorem to calculate one of its components. So we're going to treat the beta generator as the extra element and consider its value to be infinite so that the extra element theorem applied to R mu looks like this. It is the impedance looking into port mu with beta infinity followed by a correction factor given by the extra element theorem whereby the beta generator gets reinstated in the following form here appearing in the little denominator in the numerator and in the little denominator in the big denominator here. It is accompanied by the null inverse gain with respect to beta and the ordinary inverse gain with respect to beta. So when we let beta go to infinity, as you can see in this diagram here, the current on which beta IB depends on will shrink to zero. And when that happens, the test current IT will flow entirely through RS because there is no current flowing here, and it will create a voltage drop across RS, which is IT times RS. And since the voltage drop across R pi is zero, notice there's no current here, so there's no voltage drop across R pi, so this junction and this junction are at the same potential, and IT RS appears entirely across the emitter resistance RE, and it creates a voltage drop across it, IT times RS, and it starts a current through it, which is IT RS divided by RE. That current will flow entirely through this branch here, because there is no current flowing through here. Now, when we consider the these two elements here and draw a circle around it, the sum of the currents entering it is IT, ITRS over RE, and the current through the resistor RC. We know this one 
entering is RIT RS over RE. We know this current is RIT. We need to know what is the current that's flowing through RC, which is the one that's going out that way. For that, I need to know what is the voltage that appears across RC. Now, that is easy to determine because this junction here, with respect to this junction here, the potential is Vt. This voltage is shrunk to zero. So between this point and this point, I have Vt. And between this point and return, I have minus ITRS. So Vt minus ITRS appears across RC. And when you divide that with RC, you get the current through RC. So the sum of the currents entering the circle here is going to be zero, or IT is going to be equal to the current through RC less the current through uh, this branch here, which is ITRS over RE. And that's what we write down here. So VT over IT, we can solve for it from this equation, is the impedance looking into port mu with beta infinity. Next, we have to perform two calculations, the null inverse gain with respect to beta and the ordinary inverse gain with respect to gate beta. So first, we determine the null inverse gain with respect to beta for this impedance function R mu which we do by shorting port mu and replacing the dependent generator beta IB with an independent current generator pointing in the opposite direction and determining how much IT talks back to IB, meaning the transfer function IB over IT. And this is straightforward in this case because when you short this port here, what happens is that RS becomes in parallel with RC and the two together will be in series with RE. So what do you have? You have a test current source feeding three parallel resistors, R pi, RCE, and RE in series with RC parallel RS. So you have nothing more than a simple current division between R pi and the parallel combination of RCE with RE in a series with RS parallel RC. And so that gives you right away your null inverse gain. The ordinary inverse gain is done by opening port mu and repeating the same procedure, in which case you determine IB over IT with a similar current division, uh, which is given by two current divisions. In this case, uh, just elementary circuit analysis you do this by inspection, your first current division is going to be between RCE and uh, everything that's in parallel with it, uh, which is going to be RC in series with the parallel combination of RE and RS plus R pi. That gives you the first current division. The second current division is between RE and RS R pi. That's given here, and that's your first current division straightforward by inspection, you get your ordinary inverse gain with respect to beta. And when you substitute these three calculations in the expression of the extra element theorem, you get this big expression here, which we had obtained earlier. And um, we make use of the fact that um, R pi over 1 plus beta is the RE over of the transistor and beta over 1 plus beta is the alpha of the transistor, which is nearly unity. And we get this expression here for R mu. I'm performing now two approximations on this expression. First one, and a more cruder approximation, which really assumes beta is infinite, which is this term here. Later on in the next video, when we do a numerical example, We'll validate these approximations and see which one suits us best. Next, we determine the ordinary impedance looking into port pi with port mu in its reference state, which is an open circuit. That's shown in this circuit here, which is a relatively simple circuit for which you could write a couple of equations and figure out r pi. But who wants to do that? I'm just going to take 
the beta IB generator as my extra element, set it equal to zero, determine what R pi is, and then reinstate beta with two additional calculations, a null inverse gain and an ordinary inverse gain. And so when I set beta equal to zero, that's nice, the whole generator drops out, and I can right away determine what my R pi is. And I see that with this generator having dropped out, I get my RCE in series with RC, that combination appearing in parallel with RE, and that parallel combination appearing in series with RS. So it's going to be nothing more than R pi in parallel with the uh, parallel combination of R E and R C E plus R C in series with R S. Straightforward, just looking at the circuit diagram, you can write it. Now you have to perform two additional calculations, the null inverse gain and the ordinary inverse gain, which we'll show in the next video. And here is the null inverse gain. Man, that's easy. You replace the beta generator with an independent generator pointing in the opposite direction, and you short port pi. And the gain IB to IT is going to be zero because R pi is shorted. So that's your null inverse gain. That's easy. And the ordinary inverse gain is, again, another simple circuit with a bunch of resistors, two current divisions. You want to determine now the IB to IT with port pi open. And that is given by two current divisions uh, as shown here. You can verify that very easily. It's a ladder network and an easy calculation. So we substitute these in the extra element theorem. And now we substitute those three independent calculations for the R pi in the extra element theorem, and we obtain this expression here. We now approximate this expression for R pi by recognizing that RCE plus RC in parallel with RE is almost entirely RE, because these two together are by far larger than RE. Also, in this series combination here, uh, this parallel combination is less than RE, and that added to RC is typically almost all the time RC. We will see this to be true in our next video's uh, numerical example. So this is a very good approximation of R pi right here. And finally, we determine R pi mu resistance looking into port pi with port mu and its opposite state with respect to its reference state. And its reference state was open, so we're going to short that. And when we short that, V pi and V t become the same, and V pi appears directly across G m V pi, so that the dependent current source G m V pi is talking to the voltage across itself and hence it acts like a conductance gm. So we have r pi in parallel with 1 over gm, which when we expand r pi in parallel with 1 over gm becomes r pi over 1 plus gm r pi, which is r pi over 1 plus beta equals to re. So this parallel combination of r pi and gm v pi reduces to re. So looking into port pi, I have little re in parallel with RCE, in parallel with whatever comes after it. And what comes after it is RC in parallel with RS. This node here and that node are short, and that's short to this, so RS is in parallel with RC. And the two together are in series with RE. So you have RE in parallel with RCE, in parallel with the emitter resistance RE plus RS parallel RC, and we write that down, and we're done. But just out of curiosity, I want to see what R mu pi looks like. After all, we're good at analytical techniques, and we can do them fast, so we have time to try that one out and see maybe that's going to be simpler. We don't know, but we'll try it. 
So we're going to look into port mu and with port pi shorted this time, which when you do, v pi becomes equal to zero, and right away this current source drops out. And we can see that this is going to be simpler. Let's take these other calculations out. So looking into port mu with pi shorted, we have this circuit here. And what do we have now? We have RCE in parallel with RC in series with RE in parallel with RS. Yeah, it's simpler than this one. Also, this simplifies quickly in that RS parallel RE, which is less than RE added to RC, is almost RC. So this simplifies to an excellent approximation as RCE parallel RC. So I'm going to use the second uh, form of the product, r pi, r mu pi, for my second order term, as opposed to r mu, r pi mu. And now we're going to perform our substitutions for all the calculations we've done so far to write the analytical expression for the voltage gain transfer function. AV0 is what we had calculated earlier with this exact analytical expression and two successive approximations. For A1, we have C mu script R mu plus C pi script R pi. This is the exact expression and this is an analytical approximation for it. two approximations. And we're going to evaluate these approximations in our next video with the SPICE simulation, LT SPICE simulation. And for A2, as I said, we, I reversed the order. I used script R pi times R mu R pi as opposed to R mu R pi mu. And I got this expression for my A2 and two successive approximations. And for the denominator, we have for B1 equals to c mu r mu plus c pi r pi. When we perform those substitutions, we get this exact big expression for B1, which gives us our dominant response. And this expression approximates to this expression here. And for B2, we have c pi c mu and the product r pi r mu pi, which results in this exact expression here, which approximates as follows. In our next video, I'm going to approximately factor the numerator and the denominator to get analytical expressions for the poles and the zeros of the transfer function. And then I'm going to compare those approximate results and analytical expression for the poles and zeros with the exact simulation of this common emitter amplifier on LT-SPICE. I'll see you then.